Okay, first up is Gwendolyn, and um, yeah, this is all very good reference images. Um, you know, just generally attractive photographs with interesting lighting, good shapes, good reference. Um, I think this will all be really helpful. And um, Yeah, I think, you know, this hasn't changed much, which is fine. Um, I think this environment is looking good. I think it should work well. Uh, gives the characters some, you know, space to move around and, you know, kind of tells a bit of a story um, of the kind of person it is. So living in this sort of treehouse. I like the old stove. You know, it's very well drawn to perspective and all that. Let's zoom in a little bit. This has come out very well. I like the head detail drawings. I think that should help. I think this nose looks a little it looks like it's sort of more pulled down by gravity than this one. Um, but you know, you can tweak that in the model. And generally the kind of feature features look on the severe side here, but again you can tweak that as you go. Um, I think it's gonna be helpful to have this hand detail. So that's good to have in there. Um, yeah, I think, you know, all around really good work. Um, let's just zoom in on this a little bit. You know, all of this modeling is very doable. Um, I feel like this wall, oh, we've got some chimes up here, that's nice. Um, you might want to think about, is that, you know, is that a window, I guess? And if so, what do you see through the window? Um, and again, this back wall, is that a window or, um, and it's sort of interesting the way you drew the perspective lines and makes me feel like there's sort of a focal point here and yet that seems kind of like a blank wall, but then you've got the character sitting here. And so it looks like you've got some kind of pad or cushion there, so you might think of adding cushions, you know, other sort of seating of some kind. Um, but uh, yeah, it's looking great. This is Flora, and uh, yeah, the design is looking really good. Uh, you mentioned that you added some detail to the boots, um, which you can see. Um, I think that you might want to get a little bit more of a shoulder shape in there. Um, and maybe a bit more of an elbow to, um, but that, you know, maybe when you do the back view, you'll get some of that sort of sharpness to the elbow. Um, but yeah, really good design, very symmetrical, uh, front side look to really match. Let's see the, uh, environment. Yeah, not in any major changes. It looks like you added a few details. Um, you've populated this area, which I mentioned in the last thing, which is good. I think overall there's plenty of, plenty of props. Um, and I think this sort of, you know, the witch hat and the kind of the crystal ball and the vial sort of tell more of a story of who the character is now. Um, different from just sort of the average, you know, person in a room kind of thing. I really like the Christmas lights because they add this sort of, um, I want to say sort of organic, but you know, kind of uh, shapes to an otherwise pretty um, kind of linear looking uh, room. But yeah, it's just really great drawing. I, I think this will turn out quite well. Great work. This is Lyndon, and um, yeah, I think this is working out really well. Um, You've got a lot of, you know, just good clear shapes here. Um, 
you might see if there's any other details uh, you can have on the boots just to give it a bit more shape uh, maybe you know just like some kind of detail ridge at the top maybe a bit of a sole maybe some kind of seam on it or zipper or something like that so those are you know if you look at some reference for boots um, but besides that this looks really good I kind of feel like um, you know the mouth and nose are just sort of um, suggested by these lines uh, I feel like you're gonna want a little more fleshed out detail so whether with another sketch or maybe some other reference material it might help you to have something a little more detailed to work from on the face area um, because that doesn't provide you that much information um, yeah uh, this looks good um, I would still say that it could be helpful to um, do a little bit I don't know something that sort of adds some kind of personality or character to the scene you know it's clearly some kind of office but you know whose office what kind of person would have this office even if you do something with like photos on the wall which wouldn't require a lot of extra modeling but might help tell a story or a photo on the desk or some artwork or these kinds of things um, might help kind of flesh out the story of the place and who this character is you've got some schematics for a laptop and other glasses I guess that is mouse um, so yeah that's all good helpful yeah I think uh, you've done some really nice design work and uh, it should work well yeah I think my main thing is just a little more on the face and then um, having a one thing to keep in mind and especially with a character with really large eyes is that you're gonna to wanna to have spherical eyes so and with really big eyes they're gonna be pretty big spheres but you know don't try to elongate the sphere of the eye you know keep it as a actual you know proportionally a sphere um, and then you know build the eye shapes around that and you might it might be helpful you to do a quick sketch without the glasses like what the lids look like um, with the eyeballs without without glasses on because you'll probably be modeling that underneath the glasses and again if you don't want to draw it maybe you can find some you know other artwork you want to use as reference this is Jeffrey and uh, there's some good uh, reference here I like these furniture pieces I think you know it's it's some of these sort of little details that would take you know you could model a really simple table with straight legs but these interesting kind of curved in at the bottom legs are that kind of detail that'll you know just set your scene apart a little bit um, having stuff like that and you know, these interesting shapes here so I really like all this stuff even down to the shapes of these faces you know where they have a very very narrow opening in the top you know makes a little different um, yeah, this doesn't look too different from the last one. Um, I still think there's, there's bit, something a bit funny. I'm just picturing where this rotates down from, and it feels like this shoulder should kind of come in a little closer to the neck kind of try to break this down into the different parts because in a little bit more clear of an elbow a little bit more clear of a wrist um, I understand that there the harm is of exaggerated size but I think that you know maybe take a look a little bit of a look at some reference just to make sure that you know the shoulder feels like it's in the right place and you have a bit more of a elbow you know that this maybe narrows to the elbow and that there's and then there's separate shape there should I try to draw on this that's where I get myself in trouble um, you know I'm sort of imagining whoops that and then you know kind of like a little elbow shape I feel like this would get narrower And that you know that this kind of 
matches there. You know that where the the kind of elbow shape for the top and the bottom. It's not that different, but I don't know. I just I might just take another kind of a look at the shape of the arm and maybe use some reference for that. I guess I can accomplish those changes. Um, I like the hand. It reminds me of the um, the character from Up, the old man. What's his name? I can't remember, but you know what I mean. Um, I think maybe you know, you know, make sure it's obviously pretty rounded. Don't go too blocky, and also maybe don't go. Um, so flat on the top. I like the kind of stubby fingers and you know it's good that you have the different lengths here. Uh, but yeah you can see these shapes here make sure that's reflected in kind of a rounder shape here. Yeah it's it's the character I was thinking of is Carl Fredrickson in Up and you know as blocky as I remember his hands being they're still you know still kind of quite rounded and a fair amount of detail here. Um, yeah, I mean the the drawing is good in that it's you know nicely in perspective. I just think it's currently um, lacking a little bit in you know detail that kind of tells the story of what kind of place this is, and um, it's just looking a bit sparse. And I can understand this environment would tend to be on the sparse side that they wouldn't have too many things cluttering it up, uh, but at the same time. You know, you want to make sure your environment's sort of telling some sort of story. Uh, so, you know, just give that some thought. This is Craig, and uh, yeah, just really, you know, I don't think it too much has changed on this one. Although I feel like the arms have a little more detail and a bit more of leg shape going on here. So I think that's really good. It's a really nicely stylized character. Uh, you might consider starting with a little bit more of a neutral facial pose. Um, you know, the eyebrows seem to be in a fairly, you know, expressive extreme pose, and the, and the mouth is in a bit of a frown, so you might try to just go a little bit more neutral for the default pose. Yeah, I like this sketch, that's cool. Good details on the head there. Yeah, interesting environment. Um, it looks like you've fleshed it out a little bit um, with some of the uh, details. I guess this desk is sort of built in here. I think we talked about filling in some of this kind of cockpit, cockpit area with a little more detail. Um, I just imagine you're going to be I imagine the camera might get in a little closer here, and I'm not sure, you know, what sort of fills in this background, so something to think about. Yeah, we looked at this. Um, it's good. I think you got that kind of a nice balance between it looking sort of like a, a toy versus something, you know, realistic. Yeah, and I had mentioned, I know, um, about not having a neck, and um, it's okay, it's just it's, it's the movement of his head is going to be pretty limited as a result of uh, not really having a neck, but I understand that's a stylistic choice, and it's okay. So, yeah, it's really good. I think you've done some nice work here. This is Josh, and... Um, looks pretty good. I still think maybe yeah, it seems like you've got a little more shape to the legs now. Maybe you want to kind of give them sort of a more of a little bit more of a butt. Um, and then a little bit more of like a knee cap here. Um, I think that you know, the leg should be a little bit more vertical. It kind of seems like he's got a bend in the knee, and I think you want to start out straight. Um, and I'm not sure these are, um, 
you know, the, if this is like the top of the knee, you'd want to make sure that's um that's straight across. We have a kind of a knee shape at the same level, and again, a little bit more straight. I mean, yes, you want a gap between the legs, but he looks sort of like he's got his knees bent and his legs spread out, and they should just be kind of straight. And the arms are just sort of lacking a little bit of form, you know, I think. First of all, I think they're a little bit too much to the side. You want them either, you know, out this way or at like a 45 degree angle. Um, and then again, you know, some kind of, you know, breaking it down to these sort of <laughs> drawing with my mouse and it never looks like anything, but you know, breaking it down into the individual shapes. Um, that looks too terrible to include. But, you know, have the individual muscle shapes and let that kind of, even if you don't see too much of it through the jacket, like, but just have them there. And again, the chest shape a little bit. So right now, this is looking a little amorphous and sort of what I would call rubber hose-like, you know, it kind of lacks. And I can see you're starting to cut in here to get a little more detail, but I think start with the, un the shapes underneath and kind of let the clothing fit to form and I think you've got a little bit more going on on the side here with the body shape so that's a little bit better. Um, the nose is just kind of barely suggested so you might want to look at some other reference for sort of how the nose fits into the face and uh, for you know for the eyes make sure you're using spherical eyeballs and you know kind of work the eyelid shapes around it. Um, you've added a few more details here, some logs on the side of the house, some plantings in the backyard. I can't really tell the scale of these things, if those are just tall bushes or what, but um, yeah, you might want some other background thing. Maybe there's some bigger hills or mountains further in the background. Um, I believe this fence is new. It's a nice addition. So yeah. This looks like a nicely fleshed out area for the character. I just want to make sure there's sort of room for the, like where the character is going to stand and be, I think is going to be, you know, there's not a lot of open space here. So, and I imagine, and the camera's up sort of high right now. It's sort of above eye level. Like if this is eye level, we're, I don't know, we seem to be at about, you know, something like this kind of height and then looking down at the scene, which isn't, necessarily, you know, good or bad, but it's just, I think that, you know, it's a stylistic choice, and maybe for an establishing that's good, shot that's good, but maybe when you're, you know, maybe you'll cut into it, get a little closer, you might lower the camera. All right, yeah, this looks good. Um, maybe, um, I mean, yeah, you've got a few props, but I'm just wondering... I guess maybe he inter it'll interact with the axe. Um, you can always look at some reference, just get a little more shape to the handle or something. But yeah, overall, this is looking good. This is Catherine, and uh, yeah, I feel like this has come along. Um, like some of the detail um, here around the clavicle area and neck. Um, uh, the face has got a little bit more detail too, and you can kind of get a good sense of what these shapes are going to be like. The eyebrow's a little funny there, so I might um, kind of simplify that a little bit. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this is looking good. Uh, maybe something that's a little bit more defining the knee shape where the knee is. Because, uh, uh, both on the front and the side could be good. I got, kind of got it back here. Maybe something a little bit more in the front. Uh, and I understand these these kind of pants may not reveal the knee, but maybe they, they would have a knee shape there a little bit more. Um, yeah, I think this is looking good. It sounds like there's no environment updates, but the character updates look good. This is Gordon, and um, yeah, um, this has a, this armor, you know, when you're doing these sort of rigid characters like this, kind of like a robot or this character with these kind of hinge joints, um, 
it actually can be surprisingly challenging. In some ways, you might think that a character made out of rigid surfaces would be easier to rig because you don't have to worry about how the shapes deform, but uh, that's precisely why it's actually harder because it's sort of like everything has to work for real, if you know what I mean. So like when the knee bends, you can't have the different inter surfaces intersecting each other, whereas if you're doing something that's not rigid surfaces, there's just sort of more forgiving, you know, things kind of can bend and you can kind of get away with a little bit more. Um, the the placement here versus the shoulder shape is a little odd because this is this is resting on his bicep more but then on this side it looks like it's more on his shoulder but his shoulder wouldn't go that far and this side doesn't really show where the elbow versus the wrist is so and this are these are kind of really quickly sketched so I guess what I would say is go for a, a little bit more of a simple straightforward body and then kind of just put some armor pieces on that rather than having you know fully armored everywhere where these rigid surfaces have to kind of work around each other so much and I, I think you need a real you know this is sort of a three-quarter view of the face and I think you really need kind of a proper front and side view of the head rather than what looks sort of like a three-quarter view and also starting out with a bit more of a neutral expression um, rather than this as sort of like a big smile kind of thing and uh, a kind of a a fairly extreme eyebrow expression. Um, so generally I could I would say this could use another pass in the design. I mean the other thing is you want both the front and the side and you want kind of horizontal lines that show that you know it's all in equal proportions in the front and side. Um, yeah, this environment looks cool and um, I think this can work well. The only thing I would say is it's a bit sparse as far as props and things. Um, you know, really, these are all kind of parts of the environment, whereas um, as far as props, really only have these crates. So maybe you can think of more to sort of flesh it out in terms of what maybe they have in this environment. Um, and... Uh, yeah, the gun's interesting, and you've got a lot of shapes there to work on, so that's good. So, yeah, I think that, you know, there's, I, you have kind of a style going, and that's good, but I, I think this this is a bit too sketchy to model from, and I'm just just a little concerned about the challenges of, it's a little bit like an Iron Man who sort of, you know, um, but again, I, I think simplify, maybe get some anatomical reference to use, um, you need a front and side that have matching proportions uh, and uh, maybe scale back on the amount of armor you're using. Okay, this is William and um, I think uh, it's an you know interesting concept to do a scarecrow. Uh, I'm feeling like the, the body you know looks a little sketchy, lacks a little detail um, and I guess there's sort of a decision to make, which is to what extent, you know, this matches the anatomy of a human and to what extent it looks like, um, a shirt that's stuffed full of straw. Um, and those can be two different things. So right now it sort of looks like it's going mostly, you know, humanoid anatomy, but then I feel like then in that case, you know that that's not a side view of a hand that's just kind of a weird very quick drawing you know you can't really use that to model from and again these arms I, I just think that you know you really need to think about where the shoulder comes in where the biceps is the elbow um, I just and then again getting a knee shape in here getting it more of a calf shape so this looks a little sketchy and a little too simplified and it, you know if it was kind of oh I'm going for a stuffed straw look I think that could be more intentional uh, in the look of the design whereas here it looks pretty just sort of roughly done so um, I think that you know the hair choice is good the hat's good I think that this kind of face is going to limit you with sort of what facial animation you can do and, and it's not going to give you the opportunity to build a sort of full facial topology um, 
so yeah, I mean, overall, I think this needs some work. Maybe you want to pull some, you know, photo reference for this, um, you know, or so, or even go with a different design. But uh, right now, it feels a little rough and unfinished. And I'm afraid that if you model from this with the outlines the way they are, that you won't have a very nice model at the end. Um, so I would kind of keep working on this. And there should be loads of really good reference out there for this kind of thing. So maybe you'll find something you like better. Um, and also, yeah, we need prop and environment. You know, any updates to that as well. This is Idania. And um, yeah, looking pretty good. Um, pretty clear sense of anatomy and all that. Um, the boots are looking a little bit exaggerated from the side, and maybe you want to look at some boot reference for these, just to get a little bit more detail in some of the shapes here. Um, yeah, but overall I think it'll work well. I think you'll end up with some decisions on some of the facial shapes here when you're actually in 3D, but I think you have you know, so definitely something to work from. It doesn't look like these line up though, so you might want to fix that or or maybe do like a separate f drawings for head front and side but either way you want you know like if you look at where the chin is and then the forehead and then the bottom of the eyes and all that they're not they're not lining up right now and you really it's really helpful if everything lines up well so putting in some horizontal guidelines to help you get everything to line up is a really good idea Um, yeah, I guess this has come forward a little bit, um, it's a lab with various things sitting around. I think, again, not seeing too much that gives you a very specific personality. It seems still a little bit generic right now. Maybe there could be a little bit more to the design. Um, and these are pretty sketchy, so you might want to find some photo reference like this, which is good. This could give you some more ideas how to flesh out. But even then, I'm left wondering, you know, what kind of lab this is, what kind of work they're doing. You know, maybe you want to drop some other hints to give us something more revealing about the character um, and what kind of laboratory they're in. Um, but this should give you a good idea. I like this kind of giant nitrogen tank here with the dials and valves on top and some microscopes, and, you know, there's a few good details in here. You know, even just like having, thinking about, you know, the lighting and how that comes in is a good idea. Um, yeah, so overall I think you have a lot to work from. I think, again, getting things lined up on the character and just thinking about what you can do to the lab to make it more, you know, have it tell more of a story.